dust from space constantly falls from the sky. 10,000 tons a year. We call this material cosmic dust and it is everywhere. It is on the streets, in our homes, on the roofs of our houses and even on our clothes. Cosmic dust particles are just rocks, simply very small rocks, and all rocks tell a story. They record the events that have happened to them over their history, and they record the nature of the environment in which they formed. And so we can read a history of our solar system within extraterrestrial dust. Cosmic dust is, is incredible material and it, it's, it's really fascinating because it provides us a story that meteorites can't. So meteorites are larger pieces of rock that come from outer space and several thousand of those land every year. But billions of cosmic dust particles land. So they come from everywhere. So meteorites provide us with a lot of information about a few different types of objects in the solar system. Cosmic dust samples them all and provides a little bit of information about each. So micrometeorites or cosmic dust mainly comes from asteroids, which is the rocky and metallic debris that lies mainly between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. So if we were to follow the life of a micrometeorite, it would start in the early solar system four and a half billion years ago when the asteroid formed. And that asteroid would then orbit the sun for billions of years until one day, fairly recently, a collision would occur and debris would be produced from the asteroid, including lots of dust particles. And on being released into space, sunlight, just photons from the sun, are enough to slow that particle down in its orbit, making it spiral inwards towards the sun. And this particular micrometeorite, it finds itself on a collision course with our planet. On encountering the Earth's atmosphere, it falls towards the Earth at a tremendous speed, 11.2 kilometers per second. And the friction with the air at these tremendous speeds melts it to produce a magma droplet. It reacts with our atmosphere, changing as it does so, until finally it gently falls down to the surface of the Earth, just waiting for us to find it. Although you can find cosmic dust everywhere, there are certain places it's easier to find where there's in higher abundance. The very best place on Earth is Antarctica, and that's where I go to get my dust. The reason that the Antarctic is so good for cosmic dust is that there is no water there. Now, if you think about Antarctica, you think about all that ice and snow, surely that's water. But to alter rocks, ice has to be liquid water. So Antarctica is the driest desert on Earth. So meteorites and cosmic dust survive for millions of years. And this is from um, a rocky area in Antarctica called a moraine. And contained in this dust, about one in, in every 10, uh, 10 particles is a cosmic dust particle. So I search this under a microscope and by hand pick these tiny particles and separate them. You know, it's like meditation. I am thinking of nothing else. My, my interest in, in extraterrestrial dust really came from geology. And really my interest in science in general came from art. I really like drawing. And the only other subject that I got to do these things, apart from art, was geology. So I actually remember the moment where I, where I first went, geology is for me. And that was, we, um, we did a little field trip to the beach and I learned for the first time that, that I could look at rocks and I could read this detective story. I could see the evidence for myself and I could work out things that had happened hundreds of millions of years ago. Cosmic dust helps us solve some of the big mysteries about the universe. So for example, how did our solar system form? Is our solar system typical of other planetary systems, and that matters because we know of 4,000 other planetary systems. Are they like ours? Do they have planets with life? How common is life in our universe? 
Micrometeorites, being samples of asteroids and comets, provide us with evidence about the materials from which our solar system formed. So they can include tiny little mineral grains that condensed in the atmospheres of giant stars. And unlike astronomy, which, which looks at things from a distance, these are real solid mineral grains that we can study in the laboratory. And they underpin a lot of our knowledge of what goes on in stars. And what goes on in stars controls the universe.